Number 35. How many grams of the gas are present in each of the following cases? And then we have letter B. So in this case, we have to find out how many grams of the gas are in 8.75 liters of C2H4, uh, so that's ethene, at 378.3 kilopascals, KPA, at 483 Kelvin. Okay, so with our gas equations, the best thing to do is list out all the variables that you got and see what you want to solve for. So seems like they gave us a volume, right? V for volume, I see that it's in liters, that's 8.75 liters. They gave me a pressure value. Remember, kPa, kilopascals, that's a pressure. So I have a pressure here of 378.3 kilopascals. And then I have 483 Kelvin, that's a temperature. So I got a T value of 483 Kelvin. And they're asking for what the grams are of the gas. So grams are basically a mass, right? We basically want to find out the mass of this compound, specifically the ethene, which is C2H4. So there's a lot of different formulas for the gas chapter. Remember, if you only have one variable of each and you don't have doubles, meaning you don't have two volumes or two pressures or two temperatures, you're dealing with the ideal gas equation, which is this one. PV equals NRT. Now just remember that this one is very, very, very specific with its units because it all rests on the R value. The R value is the constant value. It is 0 0.0821, it's the universal gas constant. And you could see it as 0 0.0821. Some teachers or professors want you to memorize 0 0.08206. As you can see, the six kind of rounds the zero up to a one. So I like to use 0 0.0821. The less letters, the better. Or actually, these are numbers, right? The less numbers, the better. And this one has all of the units that are in the formula. So this is ATM times liter divided by mole times Kelvin. So that's why the pressure has to be in ATM. The volume has to be in liters. The N is the number of moles, and then the T value, temperature, has to be in pressure because these units have to match with what the R constant is. So now let's see. Uh-oh, they gave me a kilopascal. I need to convert this into ATM. So we just have to know what equals ATM, right? Just remember these big four pressure units and they're all equal to each other. Pick the two that you need to work with here. So one ATM equals 101.325 kilopascals. So for just converting, you could just say 378.3 kPa kilopascals times by the ratio, throw the unit that you don't want on the opposite side, so that's kPa, and put ATM on the top. And then because we know the conversion, one ATM so the one goes over there, equals 101.325 kilopascals. Kilopascals cancel, and now we have our same pressure, but just in a different unit, which is ATM. So 378.3 divided by 101.325. And maybe I'll cut this off after a couple of decimals, 3.734. ATM, and that's now going to be the pressure. So I have this value right here. Check. The volume, I need to be in liters. They gave it to us in liters. Thank goodness. So I have that. The moles, they didn't tell us the moles. So I don't have this, right? But I definitely know the R value. We're always going to know the R value. And the temperature has to be in Kelvin. Thank goodness, right? They gave us Kelvin. So we have this. Looks like in our case, we can solve for N, since we have all the other four units. So once I just double check that I have the right units, I don't like to put the units in my calculations because it just gets a little hairy. So I'm just going to say for my ATM, it's 3.734 times the volume, which is 8.75. And this would equal 
the moles. I'm just going to label it as X. The R value is always the same, 0.0821. And then the temp value is 483. Now you can get this as one number, get this as one number, and then just solve. Just for simplicity purposes, I'm just going to divide by the 0 0.0821. That will cancel out the R value on that side. And then divide by 483. And then I'm just going to do the same thing on this side, right? So I'm going to divide by 0 0.0821. And then also the R value of 483. This goes bye-bye. And so does this. And now we just have x equals. So let's see. 3.734 times 8.75 divided by 0 0.0821 and then divide again by 483. So I get 0 0.824. And remember, this was moles. So this is now moles of the compound. And the compound was C2H4. But now we still wanted the mass. But that's okay. Because remember, we know how to go from moles of something to the mass of something. That's just dimensional analysis. Times by the ratio. Throw the unit that you don't want on the opposite side. So moles goes on the bottom of C2H4. And the grams goes on the top. Remember, moles and grams of the same compound is the periodic table. One mole on the periodic table is the molar mass. So in this case, I got two carbons. So 2 times 12.01 plus 4 times 1.008 for the hydrogens. I get 28.052 moles cancel out and then just multiply that number by 0.824. And now we have grams. So this would equal, um, and looks like three sig figs. Who cares? I don't care. But your teacher or professor might. So 23.1 grams of C2H4. And that's the mass. And there you go, guys. Easy as that. What do you think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Uh, thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope we're giving you good educational content. Um, yeah, at the moment, we have physics and math uh, videos on the channel. So if you're in a physics class or algebra or trigonometry, geometry or pre-calc, we might be able to help you out. So go check the channel out. Okay. I will see you all soon. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.